Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Welcome to r slash let's not meet, where we read spooky stories about people that you never want to meet again. Now this is one of the subs that I cover a little more rarely. It does have some really good stories though. And if you want me to cover it more often, make sure to give this video a like. But with that said, let's not waste another minute and get straight into this first post by user slash Venus Nova. This happened when I was a bartender about four years ago, but I think about it often and it's changed the way I operate throughout life. I now refuse to go to any store alone after midnight. For the story's sake, I'll tell you that I was 25 and an attractive slender blonde at the time. On a busy Friday night, I was bartending with the bar manager, and he'd noticed that we were very low on some bar necessities after the dinner rush. Lemons, limes, bitters, that kind of thing. So, I was sent out to go to a 24-hour grocery store down the road to pick up the odds and ends that we would require to get us through the weekend. I picked up everything that was asked of me without trouble at the store. Until I got to the liquor aisle. There were two country-looking guys that were probably around my age in the aisle, and they were staring at me and whispering to each other in a way that made me uncomfortable, as I assumed they were making comments about me. All pretty innocent so far. Before they could approach me, I grabbed what I needed very quickly and power walked to the self-checkout. I really booked it out of there, because when you're a bartender, it's kind of like you're on stage. And are required to be charming and interact with people that you otherwise absolutely wouldn't be able to tolerate unless you're getting paid to. Thus, why I'm not a bartender anymore. I get to the self-checkout and hot on my tail are the two guys. I'm scanning my stuff and they use the scanning station next to me. I get a better look at them now and they're right next to me. One is taller, muscular and average looking. The other is shorter and more plump. They both looked dirty, and their eyes were completely bloodshot. I'm not sure if they were high on something, or had already been something for a while. They continued to stare at me, and our eyes awkwardly met. So, I did the pleasant, midwesterny thing to do, and flashed them a quick, closed-lipped smile to be polite. The taller one starts trying to talk to me. Hey, looks like you're ready to party, huh? I replied with something like, yeah, something like that, it's not for me though. They walk closer to me and ignore their responsibility to scan their items. Oh, must be for your boyfriend, huh? I flash the awkward light lip smile again and roll my eyes slightly. Like, this is your hint that I'm not interested, fellas. The taller one continues to try to talk to me. You could come hang out with us tonight. We could show you a real good time if you know what I mean. I reply with, no thanks. I'm good, I have plans already. Well, the tall one starts to get upset that his moves aren't working like he'd hoped, and starts using a more threatening tone, and moves very close to me. Like, two inches away, but I ignore him, staying focused on the scanner. I don't think he'd shout in a few days by the smell of him. He gets a little louder, and says, I see how it is, you probably only screw doctors and rich men like that. You think you're too good for us. We can show you that you aren't. We can teach you a lesson. Now, I'm not sure in what context he meant, but it definitely wasn't good. Still not looking at him, I turn away so my body is blocking his view of my purse, which I set on the scanner to grab my 4-inch pocket knife out and slide it up my jacket sleeve in case I needed to protect myself, acting like I'm searching for my wallet. I do this, however, in view of a self-scan worker standing at her podium and look at her with wide eyes, trying to communicate that I don't feel safe and I might need help. I turn back to the machine and slide my credit card to pay, while the creepy and hostile guys are practically standing on top of me. The machine malfunctions and starts beeping. The lady worker comes over immediately, and the guy standing next to me change their expression from I'm planning to torture you for a couple of days and toss your body in a creek to just your friendly good old country boys making polite conversation over here. They actually tried to act like I knew them and we were friends, so the worker wouldn't be alerted to their ill intentions. They tried joking with the worker, saying I was stealing something, and that's why the machine went off. 
The worker was definitely not buying it. She was a six plus foot tall woman with some muscle on her, by the way. I wouldn't mess with her on my best of days. Anyways, she presses a few buttons on the screen, shooting the guys a very unimpressed look when they try to act charming, and cancels the order completely. She turns to me and says, I'm sorry for the inconvenience, mom. This machine seems to not be working properly. Why don't you gather your things and I'll ring you up at an actual register. She puts her hand on my back and gives me a wide-eyed look like I gave her a minute earlier, letting me know that she sees I'm in danger. I pick up my things and follow her to a register that is near the security office. The guys linger around the self-scan, still glaring at me, and eventually complete their purchase, but stand at the exit, assuming they're waiting for me. I felt like I would be walking to my death if I made my exit in that moment. The worker keeps a close eye on the guys and scans my items. As she's scanning, she tells me there really wasn't anything wrong with the machine I was using. It just misread my credit card. She said I had a bad feeling about those guys from the moment they walked in. And then I saw them getting aggressive towards you. I already rang security to be ready to walk you out to the parking lot and make sure you leave safely when you're ready to leave. Then I saw you take the knife out and put it up your sleeve, getting ready to protect yourself. Good girl. As much as I'd like to see you show them, they picked the wrong chick to mess with. I'm glad I was able to pull your side and make sure you're safe. I'll just keep pressing buttons on the screen and act like I'm having trouble with your order until they give up and go outside. Our security officer and I are both still going to escort you to your vehicle when you leave. I thought to myself, this woman seriously deserves a raise. I thanked her over and over again and told her what they said to me, and I was getting afraid, because I don't know what these guys are capable of. As I'm talking to her, my bar manager calls me to see what's taking so long. I explain what's happened, and he was obviously very concerned, and ready to come up there himself and kick some butt. By the time I hang up, the guys had given up, and walked out to the parking lot. The worker said to give it another few minutes, because she had a feeling they may still be in the parking lot, waiting for me to walk out, and see which vehicle mine was so they could follow me. My instant thought was, no way, they have to be gone by now. I was wrong. The worker and security guard escort me out, and as it was after midnight, you can imagine how empty the parking lot was. Towards the back of the lot, there sat a big old pickup truck, running with the lights on, pointed towards the store. It was a huge parking lot, and it wouldn't have made sense for them to initially park like that. So, I'm assuming they moved the truck to sit that way so they had a full view of when I exited the store to go to my vehicle. It was like being stalked by very hungry lions. When I unlocked my car and they saw that me, the worker, and the guard were looking directly at them and that I wasn't getting in my car until we watched them leave, they then peeled out of a parking lot. I mean, they seriously did a burnout to establish that they were mad and trying to intimidate us or something. Aw, oh, poor creeps didn't get their way. Boo-hoo. I thank the worker and the guard over and over again, as I'm certain they had just saved my life, or at least saved me from having to live with whatever those guys were planning on doing to me. I did write a long letter to the store manager and to their corporate location, describing how their employees protected me and how grateful I was. I really hope that earned her a promotion, bonus, or raise. She didn't know me at all and was ready to protect me, which really isn't her job, but she did it anyways. Needless to say, I don't go late night shopping by myself anymore, and never will again. Jeez, I'm so happy that woman was there for you. Honestly, who knows how that night could have ended if she wasn't there. And I mean, I know this is meant to be serious, but I can't help making a joke. Guys, don't try picking up girls at the grocery store. Come on, when people are buying cereal, that's the last thing they're thinking about. Say so that the places that are actually designed for people to meet. But anyways, I'm happy you're safe, OP, and let's move on to this next one by user slash staring void. A few years ago, I was renting a house in Northern California. The neighborhood was just outside the suburbs. 
It seemed like the perfect balance of having space and having nice neighbours close enough not to feel isolated. The area had no street lights, so it was very dark at night, especially if there were clouds blocking the moonlight. It didn't bother me though. It made my little house feel even more quaint on dark nights. I got home from work one day in midwinter. It was a cloudy night, so pulling up to my house, I saw only what my headlights and front porch light illuminated. When I got out of my car, I caught a whiff of cigarette smoke. That was odd. I had never smelt that before around the house. I didn't see anyone nearby, so I ignored it and went inside. I just got enough a shift with a few hours of overtime, so I felt pretty tired, even though it wasn't even 7 yet. I decided to take a shower and call it a night. I woke up sometime later, sure I'd heard a noise inside my house. I wasn't worried right away because my friend would sometimes stop by to use my shower after work on his way to his night classes. I even gave him a spare key so he could stop by if I wasn't home. He would always text me to let me know beforehand though. And I hadn't heard my phone go off. I reached over to my bedside table and picked up my cell phone to see if my friend had sent me a text. The bright light from my phone screen and number pad blinded me. These were the days before phones had a light sensor that would dim the screen in the dark. And this particular phone was so bright I could use it as a flashlight. Through squinted eyes, I could make out it was 9 something, but I couldn't tell if I had an unread text or not. I set my phone aside and called out my friend's name. There were a couple of seconds of silence before I heard loud footfalls as someone started running through the bottom floor of my house. I leapt out of bed and ran to the closet. They were already up the stairs by the time I'd opened the door and stepped inside. That house had three rooms upstairs, two bedrooms on either side of a hallway, the one I was in and a spare, and a bathroom at the end. The bedroom doors were both closed, but the bathroom door was cracked open. I heard whoever was in my house thunder down the hallway, past my door, and into the bathroom. Thank God he did. That gave me enough time to open the attic access in the ceiling of my closet and hoist myself up. I just started to lift myself up when the person ran back out of the bathroom. My feet were barely inside the attic when my bedroom door burst open. I heard footsteps run into my room and stop. When they didn't see me in that room, they ran back to the hallway and into the other room, which just had boxes stacked in a corner. Some weights and a table where I painted my miniature models. I guess they decided that if someone were hiding, it would be in the bedroom, because they charged back into my room and turned on the lights. A moment later, the closet door was ripped open. I was crashed in my attic just a foot or so away from the access, so I could try to stop them if they started to climb up. From my vantage point, all I could see was from about their knee down. They were wearing dirty blue jeans with frayed cuffs and worn work boots. After a few seconds of looking in the closet, they stepped away and I heard a loud crash come from my room, followed by the scream of frustration and anger. That scream was the most unnerving part of the incident for me. It reminded me far too much of my stepfather, who would scream in a similar way when he lost his temper. He would eventually be put in a mental hospital for several mental disorders that resulted in erratic and violent tendencies. The man in my house ran back downstairs. I heard crashes and clatters as things were thrown around and furniture was knocked over. I stayed crouched in the attic. I'd left my cell phone when I ran for the closet and I wasn't certain I could climb down without him hearing. After some time, the noises stopped. I started counting slowly. When I reached a thousand, I decided it was safe enough to climb down and call the police. The first thing I noticed when I exited the closet was the intruder had flipped my bed. I assume in an attempt to find me. That was the loud noise I heard after he stepped away from the closet. I couldn't find my cell phone, so I went to the landline by the bed and called the police. I waited in my room until I heard them call out from downstairs. The first floor was a mess, but I had expected that. Chairs had been knocked over, the server had been flipped, all the books, pictures, and knickknacks I had on my shelves were strewn across the floor. The cupboards in the kitchen had been opened, and all the boxes and canned foods had been thrown to the ground. As far as I could tell though, the only thing missing was a single knife out of a wooden block in my kitchen. The police checked the house from top to bottom. 
they found that the side door had been forced open by something like a crowbar. They also found a few cigarette butts along my fence line, along with some foil and an empty pen tube, which the police said people often used to smoke meth. So, they think, he'd been watching my house for a while. I realise that he must have been out there smoking a cigarette when I got home. They collected up the evidence and told me I should stay with family or friends that night and get that door fixed as soon as possible. I opted to just not sleep. I moved a shelf over to block the broken door and spent the next couple of hours cleaning things up. I would often go to the window with a flashlight and shine it along the fence where the police found cigarette butts and foil. But I didn't see anything. The next day, I called to have the door fixed and motion lights installed at the back and sides of my house. I ran a phone cable up into the attic and added a landline. I never wanted to be stuck up there without a phone again. Nothing else happened at that house though. I lived there another three years without incident. One more precaution I took was practicing getting out of bed, going to my closet and climbing into the attic as quickly and quietly as possible. I even kept at it when I moved. Except now, I go to a crawl space at the back of a closet instead of the attic. I try not to think about what would have happened if I'd been a bit slower getting to the attic, or if he hadn't gone into the bathroom at the end of a hall first. Wow, this one is genuinely terrifying. You got so lucky, OP. Even just the fact that you had access to your attic from the cupboard in that bedroom... That just saved your life. When I first read the story, I thought you might have been exaggerating OP about someone trying to find you in your own home, because a lot of burglars, they'll try to get in and not be seen, and I thought maybe they're just trying to get out. But this person was clearly after you, and it looks like they were definitely on something, and they had a knife that they grabbed from your kitchen, so it's a good thing they didn't find you. But guys, I think that post will be the last one for today. They were surprisingly long, those two, so I hope you enjoyed them. And if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel for Reddit videos three times every single week. Actually, at the moment, I'm doing a few extra ones just because I've got the time and I want to make more videos. So look out for those. Those should be good fun. But with that said, that is it for me. I hope you all enjoyed, and all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later, guys.